Welcome to another Highland League weekly preview show. I'm Ryan Crail and here's Callum Law with everything you need to know about this weekend's big game. The main game for us this weekend on Highland League Weekly is Brecon City versus Fraserburgh at Glebe Park. The Hedgemen were in action on Wednesday night. They defeated Keith 3-1 and maintained their unbeaten league record. They've taken 34 points out of a possible 36 this term. It was new manager Gavin Price's first game in charge of Brecon and it was a satisfactory start for him. The Broch, meanwhile, weren't in midweek action, but they returned to winning ways last weekend with a victory against Rothis. They've got 22 points from their 12 games. The two sides have met once already this season. That was at the end of September in the GPH Builders Merchants Highland League Cup, and it was Fraserburgh who prevailed 2-1 to go through to the final on that occasion. But you'll be able to see who comes out on top this time around on Monday's Highland League Weekly. Crystal Paul, time 26-11 now to the opposition on the scores. Here they are. Told you double figures was coming. Yeah, two two points each at the weekend. We both predicted Brecon City and Bucky Thistle to win their matches. God, we're so clever. <laughs> <laughs> this week, again, we'll be trying to get the correct outcome, or even better, the correct score for a three-point bonanza in both games. What? It's a lot tougher this week, Ryan. Game one, uh, game one. Go, go on. Brecon City versus Fraserburgh. Now, Brecon are on a tear. They're now pulling clear at the top of the league. However, the Broch did go and beat them in a the cup on their own patch earlier in the season. I don't think history will repeat itself with a Fraserburgh win, but I think they're good enough to take a point. I'm going to go for 2-2. Desmond. Thank you. I'm going to go Brecon City 1-0. Nice low scoring yeah. Highland League game, very yeah. rare. Game two? Game two, oh, Inverurie Locos, Devon Vale. Vale will be reeling. That was a sore one to lose a last minute um, penalty at Rothis to lose the game in midweek. But Dean Donaldson seems to have got Locos on the march. That's two in a win, chasing three in a row. I think they'll get it, but it'll be a tight one. I'm going to go 2 1 to Locos. There's one thing for certain about this game, it's that. I have no clue. <laughs> Unlike the big, you can say a Fraserburgh game, you know, there's, there's no, of the, both Devon Vale and Vrie Locos, I'm not looking at either of them going like, this is definitely how well they're yeah, going to perform yeah, yeah. this weekend. Um, I'm going to go for, who's home team again? Locos at home. Locos at home. I'm going to go for 2-1 to Vrie Locos, another low scoring one. We'll see who's right and wrong this weekend. The second game for us this weekend is Inverurie Locos versus Devon Vale at Harlow Park and here's three things you need to know. It's 14th versus 15th, Locos are in 14th and the Bamfers are 15th. Both sides have 10 points but the Railwaymen have a superior goal difference. After wins against Keith and Forest Mechanics in the last week, Inverurie are looking to make it three victories in a row for the first time since November 2021. Devon Vale are looking for their first away win in the Breeden Highland League this season. Eight of the Bamfers' ten points have been won at home, so Craig Stewart and his side would be keen to pick up some points on the road. Competition time. Last week's question was, Graham McGrath, banging in the goals this season. We wanted you to tell us, as of the end of last week, before the weekend games, how many goals Grady McGrath was on in all competitions for Brecon City. The answer at that point was 21 goals. He's since added another three. Just can't stop scoring. But among the, the people that sent in 21 goals as the answer, the correct answer, we've picked Neil Stewart as the winner. So Neil, if you could send your details to sport at pressandjournal.co.uk, Tell us whether you'd like a Highland League weekly mug or a Crystal Paul tea towel. I'll try and unfurl it again. There you go. I think I know which one you're going to pick. Um, <laughs> we'll get one sent out to you. This week's question is Scottish Cup themed. This weekend we have three Green Highland League teams in Scottish Cup third round action, hoping to reach the lucrative or potentially lucrative, lucrative? I don't know fourth round of the competition. Bucky Thistle, the last time they were in the fourth round, tell us which team they played. Get that right, send your answer to sport press and journal at UK or in the comments below and we will select a winner of either a Highland League Weekly Mug or a Crystal Ball tea towel 
from the correct answers next week. It's two sides clashing who won in midweek and they've already faced each other once this season. That was in the Morrison Motors Turriff Aberdeenshire Shield a fortnight ago and Banks had he prevailed on penalties after a 1-1 draw. Strathspey Thistle and Turriff United meet in a 2 o'clock kickoff in this one. The Jags looking to bounce back from their 4-1 midweek defeat by Huntley as they take on Warren Cummins' side who have managed one win in five matches under their new manager. Fifth place in the Aaron are on an eighth game winning run in all competitions and beat Clatton Cudden 1-0 on Wednesday. Wick, meanwhile, they're 13th and they're picking up points regularly now despite a 5-2 defeat to Bucky Thistle last weekend. Connor Gethins is still searching for his first win as Lily White's boss as he takes his side up to Lossiemouth who are looking pretty good at home it has to be said, have yet to concede a goal or lose a game since the 23rd of September on their own turf. This game is 11th against 9th. However, 12 visitors of Rothis have 22 points from 14 games. Forest have just 12 points from 13 outings so far this season and haven't won a league game since August. Rothis bounced back from a defeat to Fraserburgh by showing they'll fight to the finish. That's Michael Finnis with a last gas penalty to beat Devon Vale 2 1 in midweek. Okay, there are three Highland League teams in Scottish Cup third round action this weekend and we thought it would be easier to discuss the Scottish Cup ties as a winner, as a panel. We'll start with the tie that I probably view, and I'm sure you maybe agree, the most winnable of the ties perhaps, but Brora Rangers at home to Pollock, great chance for Brora to reach the fourth round of the competition and we know what lies in wait in the fourth round sometimes for teams. I would, I mean... Pollock are sixth in the West West of Scotland Premier Division, which is below the Lowland League, but it is, you know, a, a strong league. There's no question. You've got your Darvels, Clyde Banks, teams like that in it. So it's by no wouldn't it be an easy game by any means. But I think if you're a Highland League club at this stage, you either want a sort of top end sort of champ say like a Dundee United or a Cali Thistle or somebody like that where there is a potential to for it to be a bit of an earner or the other side of it you want a sort of tie against a team at a similar level which is winnable and then you can get into the heart with the, the big boys and that's what Brora have got and I mean I think the last round winning down at Stenhouse Muir shows exactly what they're capable of when they play well and I think if they can sort of bring that level again, they should be good enough to get get through. And I mean, we've seen in the past with Brora, they've played the likes of Kilmarnock, they've beaten Hearts, they've they've ex- had that taste of playing some of the country's big hitters. And I hope for them and for the Highland League, they they get that chance again. We know with Brora that if they get themselves playing, they start knocking the ball about like they can at Dudgeon Park especially with people like Jordan McRae and the team, they can they can almost overwhelm teams. They, they, they can, there's a lot of experience in that team as well, but we don't, we don't know what we're looking for with, with Pollock. Um, but if, if Brora, as, as Callum said, if Brora can hit the heights that they did against Stennis Muir and with home advantage, I think that's enough for them to go through to the, the fourth round draw, but that's, that's still a big ask because I think Pollock will be looking at this the same way going, yeah. this is a great chance for us, I think this one will be really nip and tuck. Yeah. Broxburn Athletic against Bucky Thistle is the second tie we've got to discuss. I suppose a similar thing for Bucky, the only difference is they're away from home. Aye, again, it's like Thirdy was saying about a good opportunity for both clubs, and that's exactly it. I mean, um, Broxburn, they're obviously going for the kind of Highland League hat trick. They're putting air now in the first round and Devon Vale out in the last round. And, I mean, credit to them for winning those games, but it was interesting because both Nairn and Devon Vale kind of came away for the their ties with a bit of the kind of what might have been scratching their heads so I think for me if Bucky go down it's Albine Park it's AstroTurf but I think that will actually suit Bucky in terms of Max Barry and people like that getting Jack McIver can getting on the ball and things and knocking it about if Bucky again play to their potential I think they could win I mean again Broxburn the there must be a good side there, top of the, the other league. It's below the Lowland League, the East of Scotland Premier Division. They're top of that league, so 
clearly they're a, a good team but I think Bucky have got the, the capabilities to go through and I mean opportunities like this against a team a similar standing to get into the fourth round don't come along too often because it's, you have to go back to 2010-11 for the last time Bucky were in the fourth round so it just shows that you know these are you don't it's not necessarily every season you maybe get this chance to, to be in that heart with Celtic Rangers, Aberdeen and teams like that. The, t- the third tie is different and it's one in which for Martin United heading to Falkirk feel like big underdogs. Huge, huge yeah. underdogs for me. I mean, for Martin are going well. I think Stuart Anderson has done a very good job there. Um, they were just top of the table a couple of weeks ago. However, Falkirk are flying was it one one defeat in all competitions this season mm-hmm. and that was to Dundee United in the cup and they avenged that with a very good win in the, the SPFL Trust Trophy last week so you have to fancy the Bairns at home John McGlynn's got them going well but every underdog has its day I mean you talk about underdogs I'm not sure are we allowed to mention odds here but I mean I did in the last round so I will do again <laughs> but I, before we started recording this I was looking at the weekend's ties and there's one bookmaker had for Martin at twenty to one to win the game, which I mean I can understand it, but in a game like that, I still think that's a bit maybe, generous. Oh, aye, overpriced. We know, we know what can happen, shall we say? Yeah. Because like anything can happen, and the, th- the thing that I think with for Martin as well is the, the first thing, the, the difficult thing is you need to try and stay in the game because we've seen this we've seen it before with Highland League teams and these kind of ties where sometimes you can be three down after half an hour and it's game done but if you can stay in the tie and frustrate them you never know what can happen and it's it will be difficult because it's a, I'm led to believe it's a big big pitch at the Falkirk Stadium which obviously means trying to be compact and sort of shut down space for folk to play in harder but on the flip side on the counter attack that should provide a lot of space for the likes of Julian Wade, Scott Lyle, Adam Emsley, who are all lightning quick to run into. So I think for Martin could pose problems on the counter. And they've shown, maybe not against a team like that, you know, full-time top of League One, but they've shown before that they're a very good team at sort of being resolute and compact and defending well and staying in a game. So... I, th- I think understandably they were always going to be underdogs but I think like they're not with completely without hope I mean clearly it'll be very difficult but there's always a shock somewhere and in these early rounds one, two, three, four there's always a shock mm-hmm. somewhere so maybe it could be at, at Falkirk on Saturday I mean for Martin as well should take a lot of encouragement from their record in the cup because this is the eighth time in nine seasons they've reached at least the third round, which for a Highland League side's a phenomenal record, really. If you were going to make a educated guess on how many of our three Highland League teams we'll have in the fourth round with the potential to, you know, get the the glamour tie against an Aberdeen, a Rangers, a Celtic. How many? How many? How many do you think are getting through? I've got Meatloaf, Meatloaf playing in my head here, Ryan. Two out of three, I think. Two out of three. Two out of three. I would agree. Bro run Bucky for me, and as much as I was talking up for Martin there, I think it would be I'll, a size. I, w- I mean, I think I think I think they'll play w- well and play get a lot of credit out of it, but I think come full time, I th- think they will be out. Okay, well, we'll see how they get on. That's it for another Highland League weekly preview show. Just a reminder, we are filming two highlights games for Monday's show this weekend. We're doing Beacon City against Fraserburgh and another league clash between Inverurie Locos and Devon Vale. Before Monday, please make sure you're following us on all our social media channels. We're on X, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. You might be watching us there we're on instagram and we're on tiktok you can also sign up to more highland league news from the press and journal with our highland league newsletters there's a link to do that below this video just a reminder that we're coming to you this week in association as we always are with our sponsors alexander wallace toyota of elgin whether you're looking for a new or used toyota or you've already got one 
they're there to meet your needs and you can also find their details below this video or simply by searching online till we see you next please enjoy the football whichever games you're watching see you later